we'll be beginning our tour of the finally finished mineral oil submersion cooled PC with some inside the oil shots courtesy of the Sony Action Cam. How did we get a waterproof camera inside our PC? That I can't really tell you, but what I can tell you is a bit about the camera itself. It supports recording at up to 1080p 60fps, 720p 120fps with Sony's SteadyShot image stabilization. It features a Zeiss 170 degree ultra wide angle lens and most importantly for us, the one we picked up this morning comes with a waterproof housing that appears to be oil proof at least over the very very short term. Obviously that's not really what it's made for, it's more for like crazy extreme action shots like this one that we borrowed from Sony's channel, which you can check out by clicking the annotation right there. But that isn't to say that PC stuff isn't extreme. And this, my friends, is about as extreme as it gets. Here she is, looking so shiny thanks to the constantly cleaning properties of the mineral oil and weighing in at a massive 75 pounds. Mine and Luke's love child, Slick Jr. The hardware specs for our mineral oil cooled machine are as follows, making it one of the fastest fully submerged gaming machines ever built. We've got a Core i7-5960X 8 core processor overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz and cooled by a Thermalrite Silver Arrow. We've got 16 gigs of HyperX Beast 3000 megahertz DDR4 memory, an EVGA X99 micro motherboard. At the time of selecting our parts for this project, the only MATX X99 motherboard on the market, an EVGA GTX 780 classified graphics card, an EVGA Supernova 12 1200 watt 80 plus platinum power supply, a 480 gig HyperX 3K SSD, and finally, the case. A Puget Systems Micro ATX V2 aquarium case kitted out with all the fun accessories we could put in it, like blue rocks for the bottom, a castle, and our awesome little plant. Oh yeah, and a sunken ship. Building this machine was an absolute blast. Luke and I did it together over the course of several afternoons and there were some hilarious moments, some tense moments, and some downright scary moments. So if you guys haven't checked out parts one, two, and three of the build log, you should do that if you're interested in how this beast was created. But if you just wanna know how the whole mineral oil cooling concept works and how this one performs, then you're in luck because today's video is all about that. At stock speeds, I was really impressed. With the four fans on the rear radiators running at their lowest speed, the temperature of the coolant was only about eight degrees above ambient at idle and 17 degrees above ambient with both the CPU and GPU running at full tilt, yielding load temperatures under 60 degrees for both of them. Overclocked, things got a little bit hairier. My CPU was running at 4.5 gigahertz on eight cores with the GPU running at 1.267 gigahertz. And in this scenario, the oil heated up a lot more thanks to the dramatically higher heat output from both of these components. Because the heatsink for the CPU doesn't have a fan next to it to circulate oil, our chip reached 88 degrees, 30 degrees higher than stock speed under load, but the GPU, thanks to its fans, peaked at only 59 degrees, much, much lower than air cooling, and overall much quieter with only low speed fans and the pump, whose noise is dampened significantly by the oil, producing any audible noise. But I'm sure you guys still have lots of questions, so I'm going to go grab Luke to help me answer them. We're going to do a little Q&A thing here. All right, so Luke's joining me for the Q&A section of this video. I mean, you guys watched us build the whole thing, but we had a lot of people posting questions in the comments, and we wanted to address some of the most common ones. So first, the way this system works, in spite of being under liquid, is that mineral oil is not a conductive fluid. So as long as the fluid isn't conductive, you're not going to run into the usual issue where an electrical short will cause the system to shut down or even be damaged. So people would then ask, why not distilled or deionized water? The problem with that is that water will pick up minerals and little metals and stuff and then make themselves conductive over time. So you might get like five, ten minutes, half an hour tops out of it, but then it'll short out your system over time. We chose this tank instead of some random fish tank for a couple of reasons. Number one is that getting all the parts from one source is actually is a, a lot more convenient and B can actually be cheaper because you're saving on shipping cost of getting it shipped to you from a dozen different places. And number two is that it's specifically designed for mineral oil submersion and the walls are thicker, which makes the plexi less prone to cracking from the constant heating up and cooling down. Now, when you're choosing parts to go into the oil, honestly, 
it almost doesn't even really matter. You just have to be careful what you put under it in terms of type of component, not necessarily like, can a graphics card go under? Or can this specific graphics card go under? So you can't put your optical drive under there. You can't put your hard drive under there because they have mechanically moving components. And that's that will actually screw that up. Your hard drive might work for a little bit, but then the needle's gonna get off. It's gonna be going really slowly for one, and then it'll probably eventually stop working. The funnel question is a funnily one, because the only reason we didn't use a funnel is because in spite of the number of times we've run into situations where we could use one, we actually don't own one. And DIYing one didn't occur to us at the time. We didn't put the oil in first and then the components because of like fairly obviously Dispa displacement problems. If, if you put oil in and then put all the stuff in, you probably won't have the exact amount of oil. You'll have too much or too little, and that's not great. Filling the system all the way to the top might seem like a good idea on the surface, and it might help with this trickling noise that we're getting right now because we couldn't put that little piece of tubing in thanks to a clearance issue with the graphics card. By the way, it doesn't trickle when the oil is cooler and more viscous. I'm running a stress test right now. But the reason that you wouldn't fill it all the way to the top is that mineral oil already creeps up surfaces, and the higher you are, the closer you are to the top, the more it's gonna creep up and start destroying your cables and uh, anything that's plugged into the system below. The problems with rubber in a system like this, especially that softer kind of rubber that you might find, not on this bubble machine, but on some bubble machine's feet, so you can stick it to the uh, bottom of the tank, is that the mineral oil will actually eat it away and slowly make it decompose almost, uh, sending little tiny gooey fragments of the rubber all throughout your oil, making it look completely gross and actually disrupting the system overall. Fish would be a terrible, terrible idea. You should be ashamed of yourself for even asking. This is not water. This is mineral oil. Fish would die instantly in it. They cannot breathe mineral oil. Now, I've seen proposals on the internet for crazy ideas where you actually have like a partition dividing the fish, keeping them separate from the mineral oil, but even then there are challenges. Fish are extremely sensitive to changes in water temperature, just like we're sensitive to changes in air temperature, and I don't think anyone has ever pulled that off. Uh, no, why don't we have a fan on the heatsink? We don't have a fan on the heatsink because we already have a lot of flow and a lot of movement in the oil from other sources, and it, it's, it actually wouldn't serve a huge purpose. It might not even help that much because of the uh, where it would be pushing the oil. So there's no actual point in having a fan there. With the video card, it's a little bit different. It's not next to the pump. It's actually right up against the edge of the aquarium. So having the fan circulating oil through the heatsink will cool the heatsink in much the same way that circulating air through a heatsink will. In fact, quite a bit better. We have radiators on the system because oil is gonna be able to hold that temperature really well, but it's not very good at getting rid of it. So if you had a high performance system and no radiators, your temperature is just gonna keep on going up until it's at unsafe levels. If you have radiators on the back, it can pull that oil out, cool it down, put it back in, and it'll kind of more regulate the actual temperature. The pump we're using is actually a standard PC water cooling pump. It's a SwiftTech MCP355. Um, nothing special about it other than that it's a nice, reliable, Lang-made pump. Uh, is there act any actual benefit of this compared to air or water? Not really, other than the fact that it looks really freaking cool. <laughs> As long as you don't let any gunk get into your oil, like if you had rubber components inside that start to deteriorate, or if you had the cover not closed and some things fell into it, there's no reason to clean out the oil. It doesn't need to be changed like your car would. Now, some people, when they see the fans spinning really slowly, start to freak out and think that all the fans are gonna die because there's way too much resistance from the oil. Actually, the mineral oil acts as a lubricant. So yeah, it's a little bit harder for the fan to spin, but with the lubricant there and a steady amount of voltage going to the fan, not a steady amount of speed being uh, attempted to be applied to the fan, it's actually totally fine. Graphics card upgrade would not exactly be a fun experience. Not that many upgrades in here are going to be a fun experience, but that's part of the experience of owning a mineral oil computer. It's everything you do with it is really interesting. I built mine because I wanted a really interesting computer and I knew what was gonna come with that. So if you had to swap the graphics card, you'd probably be layering an area with garbage bags so that you didn't have mineral oil going all over the place, taking everything out, putting part of the system inside of a garbage bag for a little while, taking that card out, 
putting a new one in, uh, submerging all that back in, probably getting more oil because you lost some onto the garbage bags, filling it up, running the system again, and then you're going to have to deal with that other oil-covered uh, oil graphics card. Most parts of any PC component are not going to be damaged by mineral oil. Things like metals, things like the components of printed circuit boards. If anything, having mineral oil over top of them, especially with some nice flow through it, is going to keep them running cooler and even make them more reliable over time. The only time you're going to run into trouble is anything like cables, for example, which can be damaged by mineral oil and in fact made so stiff that you could break the sheathing around the outsides of, say for example, power supply cables once they've been sitting in mineral oil for quite some time. Now with thermal compound, the mineral oil can kind of get down in there and eat away at the outsides of it and it might take a lot of it away. Over five years of running my own, I didn't see all of the thermal compound re uh, removed, but especially on my graphics card, when I tried to run it outside of the, of the mineral oil computer after drying it, there was enough thermal compound removed that I ended up frying my card. So yes, it does take the thermal compound away, but it should be fine while you're inside the mineral oil. Because the components haven't been damaged by the oil, there's no reason that you can't reuse them. The only issue is that you're probably going to have to let them drip dry in a nice warm place for a good few weeks before you're even going to want to consider touching them. And even once they've dripped dry for a few weeks, they're always going to have a little bit of that oily feel to them. It won't hurt the functionality though. So if you get it on your clothes, you're just going to need a lot of hot water and a lot of soap. It's not easy to get out, but it's not really a problem. I don't actually know what happens if you happened to leave your shirt with mineral oil on it for a very extended period of time, because I've always cleaned it fairly quickly, but I've never actually had any downsides. If you get it on your skin, it's no real problem. It's just a fairly simple oil. Worth the mess, wow. It's amazing how many of you quoted what I said when we first showcased Luke's old mineral oil machine. And I, I said something along the lines of, no, never ever, absolutely never, we are never gonna do this on our channel. And having done it once, I still don't think that it's worth the effort to the point where I really wanted to create a guide that you guys definitely need to follow because it's not something that I think people should really do unless they're hyper enthused about it and they're willing to go out and do the research on their own to do it. Because if you're not willing to put that amount of work into it, you're probably not a suitable mineral oil cooled machine owner. Although I'll let Luke answer this question in his own words as well. No, that, that was actually a really good explanation. It's, it's going to take some work. It is going to be tedious. You're going to have to haul this super heavy thing around sometimes. Uh, it, it's going to take some dedication. You're not going to be able to do these really rapid upgrades that you might want to do. Uh, it, replacing a single RAM stick is going to be a hell of a problem. Diagnosing things becomes a little bit different. Instead of what I commonly do is just swapping out parts until I figure out what's dead, you're going to have to spend a lot more time I'm doing software-based diagnosis, uh, just it becomes a mess. But honestly, it's a really cool experience. You just have to make sure that you're like dedicated enough and you actually really want this because it, it's tedious. So this is where I have some good news and some bad news. Halfway through completing our build log series on Puget's uh, Micro ATX Rev2 Mineral Oil Submersion Cooling Kit. We heard from Puget that due to a patent dispute from a company that is just hardcore trolling it. Like if you guys are upset about this, show some support to Puget because this is a really crappy thing that's going on. These guys tried to do mineral oil cooled gaming machines a while back. Their business venture ultimately didn't succeed. And now they're just patent trolling Puget to the point where this isn't a huge part of Puget's business. They just do it because they're enthusiasts about it. So they're kind of going, well, shoot, we can't, we can't justify the cost and time associated with defending ourselves from this BS. So we're going to have to discontinue these systems. Unfortunately, um, you can't buy them anymore. Uh, although the cost was about $1,000 for a kit and all the mineral oil you needed to fill it. A little less, $800 to $1,000. Um, so yeah, guys, show some, show some support because it's a super crappy thing that's going on. But uh, in response to the uh, right. So the good news though, is that we're actually getting the rest of Puget's inventory. Now don't freak out, it's only about four units of the Mini ITX and Micro ATX. 
we're getting the rest of their inventory to give away to anyone in the continental US and Canada who wants to own their very own mineral oil submersion cooling, one of the last ones that Puget ever produced. They can't sell them anymore, so they're giving them to us to give to you guys. You guys are going to want to go to the link in the video description to get the full details, but I will say this much. Guys, we are going to require the winners to send us a copy of their invoice for purchasing the mineral oil to put into it. We're not looking to just ship these to guys who aren't gonna use them. We want people to really get use out of them. This is a really cool project, but if you're not that into it, just don't enter the giveaway because we want people who are really excited about building a mineral oil cooled machine to, uh, to get their hands on these. So I think that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment if your feelings are more complicated than this. As always, there's links in the video description to our sponsors as well as the other thing that we do. What else do we do? Amazon link. Right, the Amazon link, t-shirts, uh, and... Uh, new office campaign. New office campaign. Uh, why isn't it working? And uh, also our other channel where we... Uh, what have you done? I didn't, I swear to God. I'm not even pressing yours just because it's not working yet. This is gonna suck. We're also gonna have a link to our channel, Super Fun, where you can find out why Luke and I are wearing shot collars that were. You're pressing the vibrate one, and also it's not working. Well, whatever. There's gonna be a video where we're trolling each other with shot collars once we get them.